All right, today we're gonna to tie a variation of the graboid leech. The reason we're tying this fly today is more to show you what a composite loop looks like, how to build one, what are the, some of the tips and tricks you need to know. So this right here is a variation of the graboid leech. The original one just has a shank and not a front hook, and it's got a pair, it's got a cone head instead of a pair of dumbbell eyes. Uh, I really like this version uh, for here in Colorado because I'll throw these things at trout, smallies, uh, and other fish, swing them, strip them, fish them a lot of different ways. So I like to have that front hook in case a fish really hammers uh, the bait head first. So uh, here we go. Uh, this particular coloration is really just designed to uh, appeal to a, a variety of species. Uh, it's kind of that time of year that uh, we've got a lot of opportunity out there for fishing more than just trout. So um, <clears throat> in the vise today is going to be an XS 506 H. Uh, this is a really heavy jig hook from Umpqua. Uh, it's going to give us a good backbone to tie this for, like I said, a variety of species. So. Got some uh, super strong braided uh, backing, some Power Pro here. I'm gonna go ahead and tie this in. This is going to be the uh, connection point to the trailer hook. So I'm gonna start just a little back from where I plan on putting the dumbbell eyes. This gives me a good measurement. It's about an eye, eye width back. I'm gonna put a little thread base in. <clears throat> Using the uh, Umpqua Dreamstream toolkit today uh, to tie up this fly. It's a really nice set of tools with a real grippy, kind of knurled surface. So I'm gonna take my Power Pro, tie it in. We're gonna tie this in real tight. Uh, every now and then I'm just kind of pulling towards me to really cinch that up nicely. And we're going to tie it right over the barb of the hook. This will allow for movement, but not too much. This material is a little stiffer than like Dacron backing. You could use Dacron backing, wire, uh, any number of things. So, all right, now that we got that in, I'm going to put a little solar as thin hard on it just to. Give us a little added reassurance here. Use my cheap bodkin here to kind of get this nice and distributed evenly. This fly, the graboid leech, is kind of originally designed for steelhead, but it provides a really good baseline for uh, really a, a, a fly that could be tied for a myriad of species. Uh, that thin hard gives us a little assurance that that's not going to pop out or anything like that. So I've kind of pre-measured this zonker strip uh, for this fly right here. We're going to line it up. Uh, I want to have about a quarter inch beyond there because the hook is going to be, you know, about a half inch or so past that. So I'm actually giving myself about a half inch. I'm going to find my tie-in point. And run my thread back to there where we're going to tie this in. So I'm pinching in place. I'm going to make one, one loose wrap, a second wrap. Gives me a chance to adjust it where I need it and I'm going to pull towards me. Cinch that up nice and tight. If these fibers get in your way, <clears throat> get in your way, you can lick your fingers and kind of keeps everything at bay. So I'm gonna fold that back, I'm gonna run it up, and I'm gonna run it back down. Perfect. 
perfect. So uh, right here, we're going to be making a composite loop. So uh, you've got to use the table surface to prepare this. Uh, you're going to lay and organize all your fibers. And while it make a, may take a little bit more time to set it up, once you get it built out, it really makes the fly come together pretty quickly. So a dubbing loop or a composite loop, excuse me, is very similar to a dubbing loop. And then you're going to double over your thread. You're going to create a kind of a pinch point for materials and then you're going to twist it and it's going to create a brush. So I'm going to make this just about five inches long. Uh, this first little part of the fly is going to really make up a bulk of the body. So I'm going to wrap around the standing edge twice to really create a tight V right here. And we're going to put a little half hitch in here. Put a little hitch I mean and we're gonna rest our materials kind of out of the way over here. Way out of the way. All right, so the first stage of this fly, I'm gonna create like a hot spot. This is gonna be a spot on the body that is really uh, easy for the fish to key in on and find. Uh, I've got Senyo's Fusion Dub. I'm gonna pull a pinch of it. I'm gonna organize it with my fingers. Uh, kind of pulling on it to align those fibers as best I can. Uh, once I get it to a spot that I want, organization-wise, what I want to do is, so an inch of material here equals three turns. This fly right here is going to take anywhere from six to nine turns, depending on how bulky I want the fly to be. Uh, I don't want the fly to be overly bulky that it's not going to sink in the water nicely. Uh, so I'm going to do about... Um, I'm only going to utilize about three to four inches of this six inch ruler that I've drawn out. So this first inch is going to be that little hot spot. Uh, then I'm going to create a secondary spot. So material choice as far as doing a composite loop, there are some materials that work and some that don't. You can feel free to play along uh, with what works. Some of the more natural fibers tend to kind of clump up. So the synthetics are really good for kind of brushing out and keeping it from being too bulky. So I'm gonna put a little gap in there, an inch gap. That way I can select these two sections uh, independently. And I'm gonna go ahead and stage uh, so this little scrim, this little piece of ice dub right here is going to be the substrate that we're going to build this loop on. Um, what's cool about the composite loops is you can put varying length of materials in there. And so I've got about these inch fibers that are ice dub, the senyos that are about an inch and a half, and then this creepy crawly dub, which is going to be about two and a half inches. So again, we're going to pull some of this stuff out and we're going to organize it a little bit so that everything is more or less parallel. This creepy Carly stuff is really great. It's really buggy material. So I'm gonna lay that down uh, on top of the ice dub. Uh, again, these synthetic materials are great for um, blending. Uh, then I'm gonna take the Frenzy Fly Fiber. This is great for making brushes, a little stiffer yeah. and long. I'm going to take a bit of this and I'm looking for about two inches. This stuff's going to create, you know, the bigger shoulder that we want to push, push the water with. So I took about two inches of that material off and I'm going to lay it down as evenly as I can. Again, on that section, what you want to imagine is that your thread is splitting this halfway down the middle, about 50, 50 when you do your loop. Uh, then I'm going to finish this off. Uh, really good material, this African goat dubbing. It's really buggy. Uh, this mottled caddis green is going to match well with our um, uh, going to match well with our kind of olive leech color here. And this is going to be kind of the top. You have to put a lid on it whenever you do this. If I were to twist that together now, it wouldn't really uh, grab as well as if I put a lid on it. So I'm going to put that little lid on it. And then I'm going to use this second section here in a little bit. All right, so now that we've kind of pre-staged our materials, we've got them pretty well stacked and organized. I'm going to first grab with my Umqua tool here. I'm going to grab this first pinch of material. I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up my dubbing loop here.
The reason I'm twisting, untwisting this is I want this material to start pretty close up there as soon as I start spinning it on. I don't want to have to make a bunch of wraps with just thread. So real quick, grab some dubbing wax. I'm going to put this on the length of the, the threads here. It's going to cause the material to really grip. insert that in about as high up as I want. Uh, I'm going to give a little bit of a gap here so that uh, it doesn't get all twisted up um, into the rabbit right there. I'm going to grab my second pinch of material. I'm going to slide it in and shimmy it up to where they touch. And again, I'm kind of trying to grab that 50-50 point. Once you get it in there, you can use your hands uh, or a bodkin to uh, to organize it. All right, so now I've got everything inserted into the, uh, the two pieces of thread here. Uh, this is my moment to kind of organize anything I need to, uh, make any adjustments. Uh, depending on the type of shoulder you're trying to get in the fly, you can trim some of this and shorten this. I'm gonna leave it a little bit long so that it has some stiffness and really pushes those materials out. Uh, I want the uh, hot spot to really flare, so I'm going to leave all that. Then I'm going to pinch the thread. I'm going to twist the dubbing spinner. And then I'm going to pull. This really helps me control the spin. Uh, right away, you can see those materials get pretty clumped up. Uh, first thing I'm going to do before I go any further is use the bodkin to kind of pull uh, some of this stuff out. If I were to wrap everything right now, a lot of clumpy materials, it's, it's going to be tough to, to pick out later. So I get a first initial pick. I'm going to use this sweet little tool from Renzetti. Um, it's going to help me thin everything out. And as you can see, this really makes, you know, a really nice looking brush. Um, but it's nice and sparse, you know, it's not going to build up too much bulk in the material, prevent this fly from sinking. Once you get to a spot that you're, you feel you're good, I'm going to move this bobbin rest a little bit more out of the way. So you see that it kind of started to unspin, so I'm just going to double check. One more spin, one more brush. Make sure the materials are in there nice and firmly installed. Now I'm going to go ahead and just wrap this. I'm um, paying attention as I wrap to wet my fingers and pull any materials back here. This first couple are going to be touch wraps to kind of create a little bit of an egg sac, a little bit of a ball there. And then these wraps are going to be a little more spaced apart. Uh, by spacing them apart, it's going to kind of fill the body of the fly a little quicker and it's going to allow uh, the fly to, to be, um, to cut through the water. So, put a little bit of gap between these wraps. And I'm going to stop a little short because uh, I'm going to go ahead and put my dumbbell eye in. I could have done that earlier. Uh, I did not. So we're going to put it in now. It's kind of the beauty about dumbbell eyes versus cone head. You can kind of see how much room you've got and make minor adjustments. Um, today I'm using a bead chain dumbbell eye. The bead chain kind of keeps this fly from being overly heavy, uh, allows it to move a little more naturally. And so I'm going to be dropping that right where my thread stopped. It's going to give me a nice point to tie that in. It's going to give me plenty of room. So. So instead of doing X wraps, I'm wrapping uh, about four turns and then alternating four turns the other way. I find this really gets the, the eyes in there tight. All right, so now that we've got the dumbbell eyes in, I'm gonna use this quick moment to brush out this material a little bit. Um, this stuff is going to get, uh, this. the rest of this zonker is actually gonna fold over. And so I'm gonna kind of create a part Use my bodkin here to, uh, to kind of create a separation. 
because I want more of that material kind of shrouding the hook and so, a little bit of a part. Nice. Now I'm going to fold this strip over just right behind the eye and tie it in. Uh, if you need to, you can use the bodkin to kind of separate your fibers here. We don't trap too many of them. So I'm going to do one loose wrap, a second wrap, move my hanger out of the way, use this moment to make any adjustments. I'm going to pull towards me. And the thread I'm using today is a Vivas Power Thread. Uh, it's a newer product here at Golden Fly Shop. Uh, it's a real strong 140 denier, but I mean, I have yet to break it. Which says a lot, because I usually break thread pretty often. All right, trim that off. I'm gonna mush down this little chunk of hide that the rabbit zonker was on. All right, and we successfully have left ourselves a little bit of a gap here. Uh, this is the moment I'm gonna go ahead and tie in my rubber legs. I'm gonna do a pair on both sides. So I'm gonna run those underneath and over to my side. And this pair is going to get tied off on my side here. I want this to be a really leggy pattern. This is going to really, in the water, kind of fit the bill of a crawfish. It's going to fit the bill of a sculpin. Uh, just a real buggy pattern. So I want to have lots of legs. Um, so you can kind of run those up, which is nice about that is the thread tension kind of keeps those legs in place. Get them where you want them. wrap and then run a couple wraps back. These legs are going to kind of do what they want so we don't need to get too aggressive tying them in. Uh, they're also going to kind of get in the way. There we go. Uh, I don't have my hair clip but you can use a, like an old school hair clip right here to, to clip those out of the way and keep them keep them out of the way. So uh, we're going to do just one more loop here. Uh, this loop is going to uh, finish off the fly. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and stage the rest of the loop. Uh, I've already uh, put a zonker in my Swiss CDC clamp here. This makes it really nice for trimming uh, it off the hide. So I can just come in and trim it nice and close. And it'll make that nice and easy to drop into my loop. Go ahead and pull out the ends just a bit to give myself a little bit more grabbing room. There we go. So we're going to make another loop here. This one's going to be a little bit smaller. So a couple wraps, and then I'm going to go around the two standing ends and run this forward. Snag my dubbing spinner. Go ahead and put a little bit of wax on this again. Um, it's that little excess African goat dubbing. Uh, it's kind of like semi seal. So right here, I've inserted that. That's just going to be a little extra fill. And then I'm going to go ahead and drop in my dub here. Excuse me, my, uh, my rabbit zonker. I'm going to boom. So you can see that better on that side. Uh, I've got just enough to pinch, but most of those fibers are going back. I'm going to go ahead and grab my bobbin rest again. Get that out of the way. Give this a nice spin. Here I've kind of separated the natural and synthetic materials a little bit. That way they can kind of spin on their own. Um, I can make little small adjustments if I need to. That's going to make a real nice head. So I'm going to give this a good spin, pinch with my fingers and pull back. 
That's my first spin. I'm gonna go in with my bodkin again. Um, I like these little 45 degree turn bodkins for picking this stuff out, but you can use anything you got. What I'm mainly trying to do is remove the bulk along the strands of thread. Uh, if, I, if it's too bulky right there and I try to cinch this down, it's gonna kind of be lumpy and it's not gonna bite down on the brush very good. So um, by kind of fluffing some of that out, it's gonna bite down a little better on the actual thread wraps. And then these, because we're trying to make a little bit more of a pushy shoulder, uh, these wraps are gonna be a lot closer together. Um, so I'm gonna start right where I left off, prawning these materials back. Put those first couple wraps, almost one right on top of the other. And then we'll bring this forward combing back lightly as we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure eight, let's see here, figure eight through and around the eyes to kind of make a really full head on this one. This is not what I did on the last one. But since we got a little extra material, I like doing that because it makes a really, uh, a little bit more of a natural head rather than leaving the dumbbell eyes exposed. I'm gonna wrap this around all the way up behind the eye, bring my thread up. I'm gonna capture that a couple times behind, a couple times in front. wet thing so I'm really capturing everything I'm gonna go ahead and cut my uh, tag into my loop off kind of control those fibers now we're just gonna whip finish Make a little thread dam in front of the eyes. Good technique if you've got kind of some hairiness around your eyes and you're trying to hit it with glue or anything like that, is to kind of come in and, and slowly move a lighter in. Don't bring it in too quick or you'll burn your thread. Ooh, there we go, a little haircut. You see that heat just kind of backed some of those thread, thread ends off. Now I'm going to go ahead and whip finish. This fire orange matches the uh, thread color I chose. Just going to kind of give this fly a little bit of a trigger point. not so subtle fly with a not so subtle trigger point. Right, hit that with the light. All right, there you are. There is the Graboid Leech. Uh, a little bit of a variation. Got this one tied with a bead chain dumbbell. Uh, but it never hurts to kind of try your own stuff, mix it up. Uh, you're probably wondering where is the rear hook? Well, I'm gonna put that in last. This is a trick uh, that was introduced to me because of this fly. So what you can do is actually not have your trailer in there. You can just fold this over uh, there's going to be some hooks that are easier to, to get this through than others. So I like to get it started. Then use my bodkin to pull it through. There we go. A little tricky sometimes. Then what you can do once you get it through, okay, is I'm actually going to stick the zonker through from the top here. Okay, figure out where it wants to land. Just 
slide this hook back. Okay, kind of get a good spot. And what you do is you double it over. So I'm going to kind of exit. Do one twist. And then you bring everything back through the zonker, the hook, all of it. So there you are. You know, you've got a little bit of slack, so your zonker's not getting yanked on. You got your trailer hook, and it didn't stab you while you were tying the fly. So, uh, cool little trick there uh, that I didn't know about until I started tying these flies. Um, that's the Graboy Leech, and that is how you build a composite loop. Uh, the more you do of these, the better you will get. Uh, there's a ton of different materials you can mess around with, uh, whether it's the Frenzy Fiber, uh, Goat Dubbing, Senuous Fusion Dub, uh, and Ice Dub as well. All good materials for this. You can even use some feathers like Lady Amherst. So if you have any questions about how to tie this fly or how to uh, tie in composite loops to other flies, swing by the shop, drop a comment down below, leave us a message, give us a call, and we'll do everything, everything we can to help you out. Thanks for watching.